Good morning students, welcome to the class of smart materials and intelligent system design. And uh, in this uh, we are in the round 4 in this particular module of composite materials and composite laminates. In this particular module so far what we have covered, we have covered the micro mechanics of composites, we have covered some empirical relationships if you remember that uh, we have talked about the rule of mixture. And then we have also shown that in the transverse direction this does not work and there we have used this Halpin Psi model which is an semi empirical you know relationship. And then we have also talked about that how do we estimate the strength of composites where the key thing is that we assume when the fiber fails the composite fails. So, as a result we derive the strength finding out that what is the strain at which this failure is occurring and then getting the strength of the composites. The other key thing there that I discussed if you remember is that what is the critical volume fraction of fibers that you must give not the minimum volume fraction, but the critical volume fraction. So, that the fiber dominates the response of the system. And then I have also talked about a little bit just we have introduced that what is called macro mechanics of composites. So, from that little bit uh, introduction we will be expanding the micro mechanics part today. So, what we will talk about is that classical laminated plate theory. Many of you must have studied the classical plate theory and this is extension of that for composites which is called classical laminated plate theory. Once we do this, this will help us to develop smart classical smart laminated plate theory. Okay. So, we have to know first what is classical laminated plate theory and then uh, we will talk about force and moment resultants and how to develop something which is very popularly known as ABD matrices. So, the first important point in our classical laminated plate theory is that what are the basic assumptions in this theory. And the first point towards that is that a flat plate in this laminated plate theory will be composed of several individual layers. Okay. What do we call these individual layers? Lamina. So, when you have several individual layers, lamina is referred as lamini and once you actually join all of them together, then it becomes a laminate. So, from lamina to laminate we will be developing the flat plate that is the first assumption. Second point is that layers are perfectly bonded together implying that the displacements will be continuous remember okay, displacements and hence the strain will be continuous across the boundaries. And thirdly there is a uh, you know is there is something which is very popularly known as Karsov Love hypothesis and that is related to the nature of this deformation. Assuming that we are talking about thin plates, this you would find that such in such cases when the deformation occurs, let us say a bending deformation occurs that is happening here, then the normal to the center line you know. So, this is the normal to the center line. So, this is the center line the geometric midline so to say normal to that remains straight you know here this section if you focus on this is the section. So, this has undergone bending. So, normal to that remains straight and also it remains normal at this point with respect to the neutral axis and we would also neglect through the thickness shear and the normal strain. Okay. So, this direction deformation is actually neglect because it is very thin okay. and through the thickness shear is also neglected in this case. So, this uh, if we keep our assumptions straight then we can build up the theory and if you look at the difference between the uh, homogeneous materials and the counterpart of it in the classical laminated plate theory, you would see 
that the difference would be coming in terms of the stress profile. Because if you look at uh, any you know homogeneous material which is subjected to both bending and stretching or so to say sometimes you know asymmetric bending, you would see that the stress profile however, remains uniform across the cross section. Okay. Remains uh, I would say uh, you know continuous not exactly uniform, uh, if it is stretching it will be uniform, but it is it can be linearly varying like it is varying here, but uh, it will it will be a continuous okay, stress profile that you will get. On the other hand, if you look at the laminated plate system then and the same thing is subjected to stretching and bending, then let us say it is having three parts. Okay. There is a stiff material, there is a soft material, there is another stiff material. So, we have assumed that no matter whatever is the soft, stiff etcetera, if there is a perfect bonding, then the displacement is continuous and this part also if you look at it that this is the strain profile which is actually continuous, there is no breaking of the strain profile. right? And this strain then you multiply it with its modulus of elasticity of each of the layers, naturally in each layer if the modulus of elasticity is different there will be this kind of breaking of the stress profile. Okay. So, that is something which is unique of this you know classical laminated plate theory. So, why stress is discontinuous? Again this is the strain distribution as you can see there are two points to note here that there is always some strain at the geometric midpoint. Okay. And however, it is continuous as you can see and if you look at the characteristic modulus let us say this is some kind of a four member one that characteristic modulus could be different at different layers. Okay. So, some layer soft, some layer steep etcetera. So, this each layer multiplied by the strain is going to give me the stress. Now, since this is different at different layers, so the stress is going to be different, it will be discontinuous across the laminate you know. So, that is why that stress distribution discontinuity is coming up. Now, let us look at the deformation in the plate and let us try to get an expression for it. So, this is what is our left side is our undeformed section and which this is the middle surface of it. We are focusing on a point which is at a distance z okay, on a particular cross sections. Okay. There are four points that we have considered here point A and point D which are at the two extremes, point C as the geometric midpoint and point B which is at a distance z from the middle surface. Now, as I told you that this whole thing is subjected to some kind of a stretching force as well as some type of a bending force. Okay. There is some sign conventions with the bending because of which you know we have to put the positive and the negative signs accordingly. So, as long as you follow one regular sign convention like sacking positive, hogging negatives etcetera, then you know it is fine. Okay. So, now with this sign conventions as this uh, uh, you know plate is subjected to both stretching and bending. So, what will happen is that this midpoint will be undergoing a midpoint stretching right. So, if you if you have checked it in the other these things I sh have shown you that there will be strain at the midpoint. Okay. It will not be neutral axis in that sense uh, would not exist at the geometric mid plane. So, there will be stretching and that stretching we have denoted it as u 0. So, that is the first okay, along the x direction mid plane stretching is u 0. Now, not only that point C will be also undergoing a rotation okay, but not point C, but this line A B C D. So, if you call this to be A prime B prime C D prime C prime uh, because from C to C prime it has moved. So, you, you will see that there is a rotation that has taken place here and this rotation if the you know displacement at this particular point the transverse displacement is denoted as w 0, then this rotation is considered as dou w 0 dou x. So, once I know this uh, rotation, then at this particular point b, what are the deformations that is working in the system uh, along the direction x it is 
u 0 first and then there is something that we have to deduct here, because at this point it is not u 0, at this point it is u 0. What is that? We have to deduct that is for a small angular deformation it can be written as z phi x. In other words, u displacement at b will be u 0 minus z dou w 0 dou x. That is the basis of my building up of the constitutive relationship. So, we have to keep this point in our mind. So, now you see we have writing more formally then u and v because this is a plate. So, you will be having both uh, the direction of displacements. So, initially we have shown it how it is going to happen for a beam, but now let us say that this is x direction. So, u is the displacement and this is y direction and v is the displacement and uh, this is z direction say and w is the displacement along z direction. So, u will be mid plane u 0 x y and minus z dou w 0 dou x that is the phi x uh, and uh, that you know as a function of x y you know that is what will be the u at any point. Similarly, v at any point will be v 0 x y minus z uh, you know dou w 0 dou y in this case. So, phi x y is the partial differentiation of w with respect to x and phi y x y is the partial differentiation of w 0 with respect to y. So, w 0 itself is varying from point to point right. It is not a function of z we have assumed that the you know across the thickness you know it this w 0 is not going to get changed because that is what is the assumption of Carcius Lave plate theory, but w 0 at various points the deformation will be different right. So, if this fellow is subjected to some kind of a bending if you imagine that there is some bending that is taking place in the system then in a very kind of a you know exaggerated way uh, then the w 0 will be different at different locations of the plate. So, that is what is this particular thing would you know and we have assumed as I told you that epsilon z z is 0 and phi x and phi y are very small that is why this z phi x is happening ok. Otherwise, you have to really take the angle and you have to take the tangent of the angle and get that deformation and w x y z is nothing but w 0 x y that is at the midpoint whatever uh, is the deformation along the z direction that is what we will cons consider to be the deformation along the z direction across the cross section of the plate. Now, then once you know the deflections your uh, you know you understand the deflections most critical thing is done. Now, you have to apply the definition like for the strain epsilon x what is it? It is dou y dou x and what is epsilon y? It is dou v dou y. Gamma x y is dou u, u dou y dou v dou x gamma y z dou v dou z dou w dou y and gamma x z is dou u dou z dou w dou x. Now, these two terms you know dou v dou z plus dou w dou y and dou u dou z plus dou w dou x. So, gamma y z and gamma x j uh, these two terms are considered to be 0 for the CLPT. So, we are left with only three terms now epsilon x, epsilon y and gamma x y and let us try to actually derive these terms now. So, if I do that what you will find is that there will be one part of it okay, which will be if you look at it that in the uh, displacement expression itself you had two parts right. One part is related to the mid plane and another part is related to this angular you know motion of that particular layer. So, uh, here also in terms of the strain uh, you are going to get one part which is related to the mid plane surface strains epsilon x 0 y 0 gamma x y 0 and another part which is related to the curvature. So, all these these two parts together is going to give me the strain in at the plate at a particular point of coordinate x y on the plate you get epsilon x epsilon y and gamma x y. So, with this you know thing the what will be epsilon x 0 it is dou y u 0 uh, dou x. What is the kappa x? 
if you evaluate it would become minus tau 2 w 0 tau x 2. Similarly, epsilon y 0 tau v 0 tau x and the kappa y which is curvature in the y direction that is minus tau phi tau y by definition and that would become minus tau 2 w 0 tau y t. And what is the shear strain gamma x y 0 that is tau u 0 tau y plus tau v 0 tau y and will there be a curvature? Yes, there is the curvature which is a minus 2 tau 2 w 0 tau x tau y. So, these are the you know definitions of the strains and the curvatures in the system. With that we can once you know that you can actually find out the stress in the laminates. So, at any particular kth laminate okay, whatever be the angle of that laminate you can actually get the stress strain relationship constitutive relationship in this manner that at the kth layer the three stresses we are considering sigma x sigma y tau x y they are if you remember that I already told you that sigma x sigma y and tau x y they can be written in terms of the global coordinate system as q bar epsilon x epsilon y and gamma and gamma x y. Now, that q bar what is written here in terms of q 1 1 bar q 1 2 bar 1 6 bar 2 1 bar 2 2 bar 2 6 bar 6 1 bar 6 2 bar and 6 6 bar. So, uh, this 6 here is simply because if you consider that how we have considered all the stress terms. So, it was like sigma 1, sigma 2 and then sigma 3 is actually neglected in this case that is how the counting was happening. Then sigma 4, sigma 5 and the final stress. So, these three are the shear stress terms in which these two are also 0. So, the only term that is remaining is related to sigma 1, 2 and that is not equal to 0, these two are not equal to 0. So, that is why sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 6 are coming and this q 6 is you know it always reminds us that that is what is the origin of the 6. And here, uh, so you have the strain which can be split into two parts the mid plane strain and the curvature part as we have already explained. Now, this q bar you also know that this q bar can be derived from the q, q is the you know uh, so to say elastic constant matrix in the uh, principal directions along the direction of the uh, fiber uh, and then you know if you uh, know the transformation matrix which depends on the ply angle. So, if the ply angle is known to me I know T R is a very simple structure if you remember R was simply 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 2 that was what was the R. So, R is known to me and T is a function of T is a matrix which is a function of theta ply angle. So, that also I had earlier given you we should be able to find out the q bar. So, once you know the q bar the constitutive relationship or the stress in the kth laminate will be known to us. So, that is the uh, way you know to get it. Okay. Now, what are the force and the moment resultants okay, that would come for a plate. So, if you look at the you know consider this particular plate with x y z uh, sign conventions then x direction displacement is u, y direction displacement is v, z direction displacement is w. Okay. So, with that first of all we have the stretching along the x direction that is given by f x positive expansion. Okay. So, they are also f x and similarly y direction expansion positive uh, towards the positive y direction that is f y. So, that is what is the direction uh, you know uh, kind of convention that we have to keep in mind. And for the shear force what we always say left up and right down. So, this is v y positive and this side is the v y positive. So, that is the y direction shear force a similar shear force you know would be coming here for the v x. So, this is in plane forces and the shear forces. What about the moment? Well, so the moment once again is coming up here. So, uh, you know first of all uh, about the uh, x uh, axis 
the moment if you look at it, then this is actually m x okay, about the x axis it is coming up and uh, then you know uh, this m x must be having its counterpart on the other face. So, that is the m x part. So, about the x axis and similarly about the y axis uh, you will be having the rotation about the y axis itself. So, that will be denoted by the m y. Okay. So, this is also another bending and that bending is happening about the y axis and then you also have torsion m x y is nothing but torsion. Okay. So, the torsion is happening across this particular cross section of the system. Okay. So, it is a twisting that is happening in the system that is denoted by the m x y. So, these are the force and the moment resultants that we have to consider in this particular kind of a system. So, now based on this how do we get the stress and the moment resultants? Well, stresses stress resultant so to say are n x y n x n y and n x y. So, these are like x direction net force a y direction and then the shear. So, that is uh, you know obtained by integrating each one of these stress terms. Okay. And for the moment it has to be you know sigma x z dz sigma y z dz or tau x y z dz, where z denotes the distance of the point with respect to the neutral axis and or so to say the geometric we call it as the geometric uh, mid axis. Now, another thing that we have to keep in our mind is that this if the plate in between is subjected to some loading, then the moments are going to change from one face to the other. Okay. So, that is denoted here. If you look at this particular picture, we would see that let us start from the stresses for example. Okay. The stress resultants if you look at it, then you would see that if the stress resultant here is n y, at this point it would become n y plus dou n y dou y d y. Okay. Once it is subjected to some loading. Okay. Similarly, in the x direction if it is n x here, then it will be n x plus dou n x dou x d x here. Similarly, for the shear force if it is v x uh, at this point, then it will be v x plus dou v x dou x d x. If it is v y at this uh, section, then it will be v y plus dou v y d y at this section. And then the shear stress resultants if it is n x y here, then it will be n x y plus dou n x y dou y d y here. If you look at the uh, moment part, just I will show one of the terms. If it is m x here, then at the other face it will be m x plus dou m x dou x d x. Okay. So, thus you know the stresses, the stress resultants, uh, the both uh, like the planar stress resultants and the moments, that is the way we have to you know define them be for this particular system. Now, let us consider the geometry of a n layer laminate, where each layer is. Uh, so, this is z uh, positive direction. So, if you consider that in the, from this system actually these things will be all negative okay. z 0, z 1, z 2, z 3 each one of the layer distance from the geometric middle surface and uh, the downward direction it will be positive. With this z values okay, uh, you know you can actually now carry out the integration as discrete integrations. That is the advantage of it that you find out this sigma x sigma y tau x y as an integration over d z only for a particular layer. So, this minus t y 2 to t y 2 where t is the thickness of each layer. So, only you do it you know for each one of these layers and then you actually sum it up if you have n number of layers you sum it up for n number of layers that is going to give us the stress resultants n x n y and n x y. Similarly, if you consider uh, you know the m x m y m x y that is two bending and the torsion this one is the torsion. In this case also you carry out first the integration in each one of the laminar layer and then sum it up and get the you know get it for all the layers. So, that is you know that is something that we are assuming for and that is valid as long as 
we are in the domain of slender plates okay, where the length to thickness ratio is at least greater than 100 or so. Now, if we keep all these things in mind and our earlier expressions, then now in terms of the summation and integration, I can get the stress resultants n x n y n x y and I can break them into two parts, one is the mid plane part, another is the curvature part. Okay. So, n x n y n x y has these you know mid plane, this is the mid plane part, mid plane strain component and this is the curvature related part. And same thing we are going to do for the m x m y m x y also the mid plane related part and curvature related part and integrations we are carrying out from z k minus 1 to z k and then we are summing it up for k equals to 1 to n. Okay. That is the strategy we are doing and in order to derive n x n y n x y and m x m y m x y in terms of the strain of the system, the uh, in terms of the mid plane strain and in terms of the curvature of the system. So, uh, that strategy if we keep in our mind, then you will see that the laminate stiffness and the compliance will be coming up in this manner that uh, you know if uh, the ply sequence is absolutely unsymmetric, you are going to get a fully populated matrix. Okay. How many terms we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, this is a 6 by 1 vector. right? And here also we have this 3 uh, mid plane strains, 3 mid plane and we have 3 curvatures here, right? 3 curvatures. So, uh, we here also we have 6 by 1. So, that means here I am expecting a 6 by 6 matrix of 36 terms. Now, that 6 by 6 matrix of 36 terms is subdivided into 4 parts flat. Okay. This is one part. Okay, part A and then there is a part B part okay, and uh, you can see that these two parts are actually symmetric okay, and then there is a part D. So, this is what it would look like uh, with respect to the you know uh, stiffness, laminate stiffness okay, and compliance. Now, by definition you can get each one of these terms like A terms are all like uh, you know summation of q i z over z k minus z k minus 1. For b terms it becomes square, for d terms it becomes cube. That it becomes square for b terms that is very significant. We will see to it uh, you know in one of the lectures that the b terms essentially vanishes for certain layout of the composite. So, now if you look at the a b d matrices here with uh, the you know for which is a fun which will be functions of uh, thickness orientation and the stacking sequence and the material properties of course, of each layer. Then uh, A i j for example, this is where the material property comes into picture, thickness comes into picture okay, and the because of the stacking sequence you will accordingly get the summations and A is known as the in plane stiffness matrix. D is known as the bending stiffness matrix and B is known as the bending extension coupling matrix. This B will be equal to 0 if the laminate is symmetric with respect to the mid plane of uh, the laminate. Okay. So, this is what is the description of the A B D matrix that we have to keep in our mind based on which we have to develop the further deformation theory. So, this is where we will put an end. In the next lecture, we will learn about the coupling through ABD matrices. We will also talk about some application of CLPT in piezoelectric bimorph actuator for thermal hygroscopic loading. Thank you.